Hello, so as I promised in the last uh, discussion, now we're gonna talk about the interface tab. Now, there's a couple of standard features you might have noticed about the interface tab, right? Uh, so they almost always have a set up and a go button, right? Here I have the fire model running. Um, and that, again, that's something much like the, the format of the info tab, that's something that we call NetLogo style, not NetLogo semantics. There's nothing, or syntax, there's nothing that requires you to have a set up and go button, but every model in the models library will have a set up and go button. And the vast majority of models that you're gonna build, it probably makes sense to have a set up and go button. So that's one quick note, just to remind you that you know these set up and go buttons, they're not required, but they generally make a lot of sense, right? The set up button initializes the world and the go button runs each tick as we described, right? Um, Next, I wanna talk you through what the different elements are. So these are obviously buttons, right? And if you wanted to create a new button, you could fairly easily. You just go up here to the interface elements chooser and choose button. And then you can click someplace and create a new button. And you could call it like my setup, right? So for instance, or sorry, you could call it my setup that goes in the display name, right? And then whatever command you want it to execute, you can type here. So we could have it set up and then we could do something like um, ask patches set color, set P color white, which I'll explain in a little bit how these different commands work, right? And so now if I hit my setup, you know, it turns the world uh, white, which actually breaks the NetLogo Fire model for a variety of reasons that we'll talk about. But let's hit the regular setup now, okay? So besides the button, we also have things like um, sliders, which the density aspect here is a slider, right? It allows you to control the density of the trees in the world. So if I change that slider, I will see a different density, right? Um, and if you look at it, the dense slider has a bunch of properties. It has a global variable that the value is tied to, as a minimum level of the value, a maximum level of the value, an increment of that value, and then what the current value is. And this is kind of a way to set a default value when someone loads it. You can also make it a vertical slider and flip it sideways as opposed to a horizontal slider. So besides buttons and sliders, we will also see switches occasionally. So switches are basically Boolean variables. So you can you can you know create whatever name you want for it, like Windy, right? Um, and again, by NetLogo style, any Boolean variable will end in a question mark. But there's nothing that requires that. It's just NetLogo style to do that, right? And so then I can create that variable. Of course, it's not going to do anything because I haven't set up the code to take into account that variable but I can at least have it there. And then after switches and sliders, we have choosers. So choosers allow you to set up variables that have a number of different choices. So, um, you know, I could have types of trees, right? So this is the fire mountain. You could have oak, you know, maple, um, pine, right? And then, uh, oh, sorry. I actually screwed that up. Always a nice little learning because type, because this is the name of a global variable. It can't have spaces in it. So if I put two kind of dashes to tie it all together, it should work now, right? And so the types of trees variable now can take on oak, maple, and pine. Now, of course, that's not gonna affect the model either because I haven't added that variable into the code itself. Uh, but we'll talk about how to do that when we get on in the next couple units. So there are also something called an input element. An input element allows you to just put natural text um, on the on the screen. So you could have like a global variable, the person could just type it in right there and it'll automatically capture whatever the value of that is, right? Um, there is a monitor, which you see in this code, because it's right here, percent burned is a monitor. And a monitor actually lists off um, some variable, some status of variable. So in this case, it's the number of burn trees divided by the initial trees times 100 played to only one decimal, displayed to only one decimal point, right? Um, you can have plots, which we'll get into a lot more detail later on, uh, but essentially a plot allows you to actually plot um, some, of the some of the variables against each other. So for instance, um, you, the standard one that always creates is plot count turtles. In fact, in the fire model, there are no turtles, so I'll just plot the zeros all the time. Uh, but we'll get into a much longer description about how to set up plots. Um, but they're very detailed, and you can have as much information there as you want. Right? Um, there is an output variable, so this is like the opposite of the input variable. allows you to display any kind of arbitrary text that you want to the variable whatsoever. So um, if you basically set uh, you can write to the output from the code, right? And let's you specify the font size that it's gonna be in. 
And then finally there's notes. And notes are just used for like description of what's going on. So you could put like this controls the wind, right, into this particular description. Right? And so these aren't really, they're not interactive elements, but they help you explain your model better to the, um, to the, um, the user of the model, right? Um, do want to also talk about the fact that you know there's a couple other things, some of which I've mentioned before, uh, but there is something called the speed slider. Oh, let's make this more dense so there's something going on, right? So there's something called the speed slider, and the speed slider will allow you to slow down the model run, so it takes a lot longer to run, or speed it up, right? Um, and in the extreme case, if you speed it all the way up, you're not seeing all the updates and things like that, but the model just runs faster, right? Um, there is, you could also modify, you can also, by the way, click off view updates and on ticks, that tells the model when to display. Um, and that's also related to kind of the speed of the model because the more it's displaying, uh, the slower it's going to run, right? Um, in addition, one other thing about the interface tab we should talk about is there are some settings for the world, right? And so in this particular case for the fire model, uh, they're set to 125 and 125, right, to give you a very big world. But you could set them much smaller. You could set them to like 50-50, right? And this will create a smaller world, as you see, right? And you can still run the same models uh, on that smaller world, right? Uh, now, I want to talk about one last thing. So, so the, you know, we've seen kind of what's going on. There's these buttons called world wrapping. Um, and we haven't talked about that yet, right? Um, and in fact, I'm going to bring that fire, the, sorry, the flocky model back up because I think it's a really good description of how world wrapping works. So let's go to the NetLogo file models library. Um, I'm going to not save my changes to that model because I didn't really like them. Uh, and then I'm going to go to biology and then go to flocking, right? Okay. So in the standard flocking model, right, when a bird hits a wall, right, like this, this wall over here, let me find one that's coming across. So See, that one came across and it just appeared over there, right? And so they wrap around the world. The, the right side is wrapped to the left, and the top is wrapped to the bottom. Sometimes also called the Pac-Man world because, you know, Pac-Man goes through one side and comes out the X. But you can actually play around with this, so you could actually turn off that wrapping, right, by clicking off these wrapping horizontally and vertically buttons. And when you do that, as you'll see, all the birds get stuck at the walls because they don't have any way to turn away from them necessarily, right? Um, so that's all the elements of the interface tab. Um, in this unit, we're going to start building up some of our own uh, small models, and so hopefully you get a chance uh, to play around with this quite a bit. Thanks.